welcome to Encounters. My guest today is uh, Tracy von Slyke. She is the author, together with Jessica Clark, of uh, a book, Beyond the Echo Chamber, Reshaping Politics Through Network Progressive Media. And uh, uh, Tracy uh, was uh, the publisher of In These Times, uh, a magazine probably known to many of our viewers. She's now the director of the communication uh, initiative consortium, the, me media the, consortium. the media consortium. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's that about? It's a network of uh, the leading progressive media outlets in the country, so ranging from The Nation to Alternate, from Mother Jones to Free Speech TV, uh, radio, blogs, print, web, film. So not only depends. newsprint, but also the online and mm -hmm. uh, visual media, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, may I just ask you two questions related to the, the title of mm -hmm. the book, uh, The Echo Chamber. What uh, do you refer what to? What is The it? Echo yeah. Chamber? So oftentimes we see um, an, a media outlet that has a talking point, right? Mm -hmm. Same talking point, same news story over and over again. I'll, I'll take an example of sort of the right-wing media system. Rush Limbaugh right. says something over and over again. Then you hear it on Fox News, the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, then you hear a politician saying it over and over again. And that's the echo chamber where a, a small group of elites decide what is the news or what is the message mm -hmm. um, that everyday people are going to be hearing and, and they're deciding what is important. Right. And it becomes sort of the mainstream narrative and the accepted um, sort of message of the day about important issues of our country. Right, so it's uh, the mainstream media and that's not what you're going to uh, be talking about and that's not what the book is about. Mm -hmm. It's beyond it's that beyond stage, it, yeah. right? So, uh, Beyond the stage means progressive media. What are progressive media? Well, um, for us, progressive media really means uh, organizations that are doing fabulous journalism or great acts of journalism on a regular basis, um, and, but are transparent about what are their values and what is their ideology. Mm -hmm. um, so you know that Mother Jones, while it is an incredible investigative journalism organization, is also coming from a certain viewpoint. Right. But they're very transparent about that. So you can believe in their credibility and what they're reporting about that. That political ideolo ideology does not, in fact, Im impact the, um, the work of their reporting and the quality right. of it. But you have other uh, media in your uh, uh, consortium as well. Yes. So it's not that you try to focus on one ideology. No, absolutely. There's a whole spectrum of people mm -hmm. who are organizations across sort of the political line. Um, what, what we truly try and focus on are people and organizations that are doing great acts of journalism on a regular basis that are influencing and trying to impact the outcome of our you know, democratic process and mm -hmm. our politics. Um, and, and want to work together uh, okay. in shaping the, our democracy. So wh where would you draw the line? What's no longer progressive by your standards? Well, um, I would say like the Weekly Standard is not progressive. <laughs> That's definitely on the right wing side. Um, and I think, you know, for us, progressive is a very broad definition and we're willing to work with a lot of different people. We, mm -hmm. in fact, you know, would like to work with different public media outlets as well. So it's not a, I think it's more of who's on the sort of opposite side of the spectrum right. versus the whole, into, you know, the, the continuum that we're all a part of. Okay, so let me take a quote from uh, your book uh, okay. on page three. You quote somebody else, but basically what uh, the definition is, progressive Sufism is, is a non-ideological, pragmatic system of thought grounded in solving problems and maintaining strong values within society. Mm -hmm. Can you associate with that definition? Absolutely. Okay, so you, you made the claim that uh, uh, it's a, a non-ideological kind of perspective, but it belongs to the m mainstream of uh, society the values uh, involved in uh, I mean, progressivism? I, I mean, I think that progressivism um, is rooted in uh, equality for all mm -hmm. and social justice um, and opportunity for people to access, um, have equal access to a lot of right. different things, jobs, health care, uh, water, housing, um, and not being judged on uh, uh, through racism or gender and all that kind of stuff. All that plays into progressive values. Mm -hmm. um, and I do believe that is where most people in this country are coming from in terms of 
um, what, what, what we want to accomplish both individually and as a large collective community. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a powerful thing that many, many people can relate to, especially as we've seen sort of the economy in our downshift mode. Uh, we've seen people either go sort of into their individual self-protective mode or mm -hmm. figuring out how can I reshape, how can I work within a community um, that's going to better all of us. Right. And that's what we really want to support is the latter. So I hear you saying that uh, you think that progressivism is a, uh, the mainstream of American society, mm -hmm. while if uh, I take the devil's advocate position sure. and see what's going on these days uh, with the discussion on health reform, etc., I yes. would rather uh, have a bit of a question about uh, So, So that. this is very interesting. Um, so you're talking about the Tea Party, I Indeed, think. Yeah. Okay. So um, the Tea Party it has done, what it's done is an amazing job of uh, reaching out to those people that are incredibly angry about sort of corporate corruption, mm -hmm. uh, banking greed. Um, and those are people I think that can be, you know, drawn in through both sort of left politics or right politics. The right did a much better job of reaching out to those people and creating a space for them right. to, um, to express their anger. Um, now, obviously, there's fringe parts of the Tea Party that are um, uh, much more right-wing radical. Um, but what the Tea Party has, that say the left um, anti-war movement, you know, is in comparison does not have, is the Tea Party has an embedded news source called Fox News, and which will give them coverage 24/7. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, if, if you say, take the comparison of the sort of the anti-war left. Uh, as the um, you know, Iraq war invasion was starting in Ga Afghanistan, um, we didn't have the same parallel media organization. Right. MSNBC ha has grown in the last couple of years, but even to this day, they will still not probably give the same sort of coverage. And, and um, I think in, in, in terms of thinking about news judgment, they don't have to do it 24-7, but they would not do the same for the anti-war left. Okay. I, I f can follow your argument, but then uh, my question uh, becomes, are you going to preach only for the people who are already convinced that uh, this is the right uh, way forward? No, well, there's a couple of things. One is um, the right has done an amazing job over the last 30 years of um, preaching to the choir. The left mm -hmm. is always accused of, you're just preaching to the choir. Well, mm -hmm. what do you think the right has done? And that's how they've built an incredibly strong base. Um, second, what we also need to do is recognize that there are tens of millions of people within sort of the progressive movement, all who, once again, fall across the spectrum. There's lots of debates about right. progressive policies and so forth. So preaching and informing is not a bad thing. The second step is to um, help mobilize, assemble them, to take action. That's the next big step um, on a, a sort of a, a large basis. Um, the third and most important thing that we also need to do over the long term is really talk about how we expand the diversity of who is in the progressive movement. Um, in the book, I have a chapter mm -hmm. called Move Beyond Pale, Male, and Stale, which I shortened to Move Beyond PMS. And we really uh, talk about how the demographics of this country are changing so dramatically. And we need to be thinking about how we're reaching out to communities of color, women, young people, and we need to transform and reshape sort of the journalism we're producing to, to make it more accessible to those communities and make sure that we're reporting on them, that those people within those communities are represented within our own media organizations. Um, that is probably the most critical step that we can do in terms of long-term influencing of, of public policy and politics mm -hmm. in this country. But are you saying that that hasn't happened yet? Uh, no. And how come? Um, I mean, I think we, we've seen that the, the left is primarily, um, there's been amazing movements, the civil rights movement, the, the, the feminist movement over the last couple of decades, but I don't know how successfully it's been integrated into the overarching um, progressive movement on a, 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 a large basis. So we need to continue to um, stitch all that together, integrate on a much better basis. Um, and that's going to be the, the, the most critical thing we can all do to A, um, expand the audiences of who's 
reaching and um, listening and watching progressive media and tapping into the larger progressive movement. So do, do I read you correctly uh, if I assume that there is a need for some kind of a global team and a global agreement on strategies for the left? Um, global, I think, yes. Or a common <laughs> team? <laughs> I mean, yes, we do need global. Don't get me wrong on that one. But we, I think we still need to focus on home base. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're never going to be in the same lockstep. Uh, top-down sort of lockstep that the right has built over the last 30 years. They've mm -hmm. built what David Brock has called sort of the right-wing noise machine. Um, and that's not how we are going to operate because we respect and we're too full of diversity and cherish debate as much as possible. Um, so how we're going to operate, our infrastructure is going to more look like collaboration and coordination, sort of fitting different puzzle pieces right. together, locking them together when it makes sense. Um, and, and I think that's going to be taking advantage of also this new media environment that we are in, uh, which allows for what we call network powered media mm -hmm. that sort of breaks out of the elites, um, mm -hmm. and allows <coughs> independent media and everyday people, uh, to work separately and together to create news, to spread it, to share it, that will help sort of either influence the mainstream or bypass it. And, and be large enough that it's going to influence uh, politics and policy. Right. In, in your book, you, uh, as the subtitle goes, Network Progressive Media, you identify a couple of layers of networks. Mm -hmm. Could you briefly explain those layers? Absolutely. So we have these um, four layers of networks that we think are critical for anyone that's a media maker. And that could be you or me, mm -hmm. <laughs> or a more traditional organization, right. if they want to have an impact. Um, so, uh, so the first network is what we call um, individual users, networked users. Once again, that's you and me. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on YouTube, and we are concerned about particular issues. So we are accessing content um, that we care about, and we're spreading it to our families, we're spreading it to our peers, we're spreading it to our colleagues, the people we're connected to online. So we look at how media makers can really start tapping in and finding those networked users mm -hmm. and actively moving them to spread content or take action off of that At content. At an individual basis. On an individual level. Mm -hmm. Then we go up a level where we have these self-organized networks where you and I and maybe one or two other people were concerned about what's happening in the Pioneer Valley. Uh, so we're sharing content and actions around that through Facebook groups or right. Twitter or um, an email newsletter like a Google group. Once again, how can media makers A, go out and find those self-organized groups um, to help them share stories, uh, maybe potentially get uh, news tips, and also um, create content that they may not be able to do on their own. Um, also, how can a media maker help create those organized networks on their own websites? What are the spaces they can mm -hmm. uh, f create f and support for these self-organized groups to emerge? Um, the third network is institutional networks, where groups like the Sierra Club or ACLU has sort of an institutional uh, group of people who are clearly committed to their organization over the long term. How can we? So could be NGOs and uh, NGOs, advocacy groups, right. nonprofits, what have you. Um, how can journalism or organizations or media makers work together with these uh, nonprofits, uh, advocacy groups, to um, and their audiences, their users, to identify stories, to create content, to spread content? Once again, it's, are you seeing the pattern here? Mm -hmm. um, so it's how do you sort of lock those pieces together over the short or long term that's going right. to have an impact on a particular story? Uh, the last is sort of networks of institutions where um, my organization, the Media Consortium, is an example of media organizations working together on editorial projects, business projects, trying to figure out how to cross-pollinate and share content across our audiences. So each of these networks provides a media maker with um, steps and actions to uh, spread and build out their content in a way that they've never had before right. with this new technology. Okay, you mentioned a couple of times the new technologies, uh, yes. the ICTs, Twitters, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, but does it 
what, what's the relevance of, of the new technologies? Uh, aren't the old technologies not good enough or isn't it about uh, communicating uh, with and among people rather than uh, using technologies to communicate? So um, I, w I want to be very clear that um, radio and television and print mm -hmm. um, are incredibly important. Um, you know, what they do signify is for a lot of people who are very busy, uh, especially for people out in um, rural areas or, or people in poor communities that don't have opportunities to go online, um, radio and television and print are the lifeblood of how they get, get information. Mm -hmm. So that is incredibly important. But we, what we want are talking about is how do we build out from there? How do we integrate? The most essential thing that um, we think progressive media can do is can to inform and build out communities. Um, so this technology sort of breaks down barriers and allows people to communicate. Crosses space, crosses time. Yeah, it, it communicate with people instantly over a period of time, build out relationships. Uh, you and I are across, you know, the country. We can check in with mm -hmm. each other in ways that we have never been able to before. We can share content instantly. We can comment on it. We can d create a petition in 30 seconds and start sending it out. These, these new technologies allow us to um, interact and build communities in a way that we never had before and overarchingly have an impact if we do it uh, well and together on our politics and our policy, once again, that, that, that we haven't seen. It's yeah, unprecedented. From research, we know that indeed there is a, 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 a possible and a positive use to be made f with those new technologies, mm -hmm. but there's also uh, a group of scholars who argue uh, or who are much more concerned about the long-term implications mm -hmm. of all of this. So for the short term, uh, a, a drive, a, a, f a fundraiser, all these things can be done through new technologies. Mm -hmm. But when you really want to change society and uh, uh, influence uh, people's uh, thinking and, mm -hmm. and behavior, then you need uh, interaction. You need people-to-people -people kind of communication. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, I... I think it is dangerous if we rely on sitting behind our computers as the mm -hmm. only interaction. Um, these are clearly, these technologies give a way for swift and long-term opportunities to work together and build out relationships. But if we don't transfer it into the real world, mm -hmm. offline, in the streets, in coffee shops, in houses, um, then we aren't going to be doing our overarching um, job. Right. And we're not going to have that impact. So. Um, I agree with that, but it's where do we start mm -hmm. um, and where are the tools readily available that that leads us to that path uh, or down that path in a much better way. These are the technologies and strategies that we really need to think about. Okay, so let's go to those strategies mm -hmm. because you've outlined also a couple of those in your book uh, and you've already indicated that, uh, if I may use the example, Fox is obviously more successful in its strategies. Uh, for well, it's got, you know, a couple, you know, tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars behind it. Right. So, so how are you going to, <laughs> to come up with a counter strategy? So um, in our book we lay out um, six different strategies mm -hmm. and, and about how progressive media has used this new networked media environment to impact policies, politics, um, and different sort of social issues. And cumulatively if you start building them together uh, the results are amazing. Uh, for example, we, uh, in our chapter, Embrace 21st Century Muckraking, we talk about an organization called Talking Points Memo, mm -hmm. which has become one of the premier sort of liberal news sites online. And a couple years ago, they uh, were working with their users that, uh, to identify a bunch of attorney generals were fired across the country. And there were some small media spots about it, and everyone's like, is this politically motivated? What's going on? Well, Talking Points Memo actually worked with its users, its audiences around the country to start pulling together those local pieces mm -hmm. and on a national level and combined it with their own investigative reporting. What happened? They drove the story so much, so many other people started picking it up. The mainstream media, which had been basically ignoring this um, to the, this point, uh, had to start picking up the story and did recognize that these U.S. Attorney Generals were fired for mm -hmm. political reasons under the Bush administration. At the end, about a year later, Attorney General Alberto Gonzalez had to resign. 
and um, Talking Points Memo won a George Polk Award, the first online news site to do so. Right. That's a pretty significant impact that Talking Points Memo had because of how they worked with its, their users, interacting with them, and combining great investigative reporting, muckraking, to impact um, the direction of this country. So but that's one story. Yeah, okay, that, uh, that's uh, interesting indeed. But mm -hmm. that's only uh, one single kind of mm -hmm. uh, activity. And what you probably would like to achieve is much more than Yeah, so just you one. know, we have other stories like um, Brave New Films, mm -hmm. uh, which is, uh, used to produce sort of these long-form documentaries around, um, around Fox News called Outfoxed or Walmart, the high cost of low right. price. And they did great sort of organizing, uh, grassroots organizing, where they literally took it to different communities, uh, organizing with churches and, and uh, community groups sort of bypassing the movie screening system and reached millions of people with, the, with these uh, documentaries. Over time, they started switching to short form video mm -hmm. um, and producing all these um, two to three minute videos where people could take action. So they were doing great acts of journalism. They were doing great reporting, but also combine, combining it with advocacy. And what we saw, uh, one amazing example is during the 2008 election, um, John McCain was starting to creep up with, uh, on Obama around the, in the pollings. Right. And um, at the same time, the economy was in the beginning of its downshift mode. And um, a reporter asked, a reporter from Politico asked John McCain, how many houses do you own? And he went, I don't know. Ask my campaign director. Well, the reason that Politico reporter asked John McCain is because Brave New Films had created a short video called McMa McCain's McMansions mm -hmm. that documented the seven mansions that McCain owned and interspersed it with the story of a woman that had just lost her home. That video went incredibly viral all over the place, and because of it, Politico went directly to John McCain. And could raise that question. Yeah, and, um, and that reporting wouldn't have been done otherwise. Um, totally changed the direction of the, of the election. I mean, I think Obama would have won anyways, but it would probably would have been tighter, and it sort of cemented where, um, you know, people's understanding of how McCain was really disconnected to what was going on in, in their own lives. So that's another powerful. You start seeing sort of the buildup right. of all of those. And we also talk about how um, around Jenna 6, when... Uh, six African-American youths were um, incarcerated for attempted murder of uh, a white, uh, a fellow white student. Um, a bunch of um, blogs in, within the African-American uh, blogosphere, also known as the Afrosphere, uh, came together and started covering the story, uh, reporting on it, and working with a group called um, Color of Change. Right. Um, together, they drove amazing media coverage and brought, helped organize tens of thousands of people to come to Jenna 6 um, in a way that um, fully acknowledged Rainbow Push, the NAACP, uh, were, were not, didn't catch on to the story, in fact ignored it, um, and weren't, wouldn't have been able to motivate the same kinds of people. So once again, you start seeing the cumulative impact mm -hmm. of all these things. And, and we believe that it's, you know, we need to take all this work to the next level. There needs to be more investment in these media organizations, um, in the reporting they're doing, how they're interacting with their community, how they're taking advantage of these tools and these strategies uh, to make a lot larger impact. Right. So, but w the arguments you use are uh, arguments, and, and there is a good reason f uh, to to take that kind of strategy mm -hmm. to set the agenda or to change the agenda set by others and uh, hopefully that will also include and, and, and contribute to uh, a, a larger debate of, of issues which are related to the agenda. Uh, but uh, still, I guess uh, we need to do more in, in order to uh, contribute to societal change, mm -hmm. to the change at large uh, which is needed. And uh, you and others may have hoped that uh, with the uh, uh, election of Obama, uh, a major change would have uh, occurred or mm -hmm. could have occurred. And I uh, noticed that there is a bit of a f expression of frustration uh, creeping up these days. Uh, how to explain that part? Well, okay, I'm from Chicago, mm -hmm. so I'm from Obama's hometown. I greatly admired uh, President Obama as he was coming up through state senate 
and um, running for senator and all that stuff. I was very clear that President Obama is not a progressive. Mm -hmm. Well, I think a lot of people in this country w w thought he was. Right. So I think people thought there were going to be um, a lot more changes. Um, but first of all, Obama is dealing with a very contentious Congress, uh, Republicans who have uh, put their feet in the sand and refused to move, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes Democrats in Congress who don't have much of a backbone. Um, I think, you know, while it's very disappointing about what he's been doing around Afghanistan um, and how, I don't think how health care was handled in terms of messaging and actually um, getting the, explaining what was, re what this bill was really about, I don't know how well, the, I don't think the administration did a great job. But, but there are moments and flashes in this administration that are just I incredibly overwhelming. Um, and we have an incredibly smart, incredibly articulate, incredibly um, passionate president. And um, where we were compared, where we are now compared to two years ago, uh, dramatic change. So while we complain, it's out of love. Okay. <laughs> and out of love for him and out of love for this country, in my opinion. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. So, uh, in in uh, one of your strategies, and you've already made a reference to it, you say we need to be more. Uh, we will need to be uh, going uh, beyond the pale, mail and stale mm -hmm. kind of strategy. Can you give us a couple of examples of that? Well, um, as I said earlier, um, the, the progressive movement at large and the progressive media itself is still sort of white male dominated. Mm -hmm. Um, we've seen a, a big change in the last couple of years, especially around women coming in to be into more leadership positions. Um, but there's still a, a large gap in terms of the kind of coverage around women and communities of color and how those communities are represented within even the newsrooms. So um, we, we need to create a system where we are integrating uh, more of these communities into our newsrooms and into the coverage because the demographics of this country are showing that you know whites will no longer be in the majority in right. just a couple years so a for the the political impact we want to have we need to be reaching out to these communities now um, and also if we're looking at sort of the sustainability of our organizations literally the business models we need to be expanding beyond our current audiences who in 20 years might not be around anymore. Mm -hmm. So we need to be thinking about that on both levels. And that's uh, again what your consortium tries to achieve, yeah, right? Yeah, we're working on a lot of different issues with that. Yeah. Okay, I can only wish you all the best. Thank uh, you. Thank you for your interest.